is how can we, how can we hear God when He is speaking to you? You've got your ear tuned. You have to have your ear tuned to God. And the way you do that is through the Bible. You open the Bible and you begin to read. And God hears your voice tuned to Him. Your ear is tuned to Him. And He's wanting to speak to you. But many people today say, I can't hear God speaking to me. How do I hear God speaking? Well, I want to use a biblical example today of how one boy did. He was 12 years old, and we'll be looking at him today. And he had an interest in hearing from God, but he didn't know who God was. He was a religious boy. He went to church every single day of his life. He, uh, as a young boy, his mother dedicated him to the Lord to serve in the church. She was so interested in him coming to know God that she gave him to the priest and said to him, you keep him, let him be raised here and serve in the temple and take care of the temple all of the days of his life, and I want him to know God. It was so important to her that he would come to know God that she did that. She would rather love him enough to give him up than to hold on to him and to keep him from knowing God. Oh, that we have parents today that have that hunger and interest that their children come to know God too. I'm talking about a man by the name of Samuel. And uh, we'll pick up his story here in just a few moments. But we have a problem today. And the problem today is that not very many people, not many people at all, have very heard from God. So either God has a problem. Either He doesn't know how to talk to men, or He doesn't have anything to say. But He does. God does have a word to say to us today. And it's not the first time that people have been without hearing God. And it's not the first time that that people have hungered to hear from God. Do you want to know what God's saying to you about a matter? Do you want God to give you direction in your life so that you can take and and make decisions that are wise and and come with the the understanding of, of God Himself when you make decisions? I hope you do. God does speak. But it's not the first time in history that people have not heard the voice of God. If we look back over in the Bible to to the book of Amos, turn with me over in the book of Amos to to the 8th chapter, the 11th verse, and it says, Look, the days are coming. This is a declaration of the Lord God. When I'll send a famine. Now, famine is when people are doing without something. And we're in such a day today where people are doing well. It's not food that people are doing without. If you had not looked around lately, you'll notice that people are really plump. I mean, we got lots of we got lots of food going in. So it's not a famine today of not eating. It's a famine of not hearing from God. We have so many people in the United States that do not know who God is or not even hear from God and do not know that even God cares about them. There was a famine throughout the land, not a famine of bread or thirst for water, but a famine of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Now, there was a problem. The church was failing the people. The church was not taking one of these and teaching the Bible. We live in a nation today where that is the norm in so many churches today is that the Bible is not what's being taught from the pulpit. The pulpit is devoid of the Bible teaching and it's full of man's teaching. And so we're not hearing from God today for a clear and simple reason of the fact that we're not into the Word of God. It's not uncommon for people to own a Bible today. Almost everyone does have a Bible or access to one. But rarely does the Bible get opened and actually turn to Scripture and people read it. I won't ask you to raise your hand if you have a Bible and you're not opening it and reading it on a daily basis. But I imagine I would find that so many people are doing that very same thing. And they're wondering why God's not speaking to them. Well, the reason that God's not speaking to them is they're not listening. Are you listening this morning? Do you want to hear God speak to you? Well, look further. Look over and see that we have today so many false gods. We have false gods of of, uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, Of pleasure. We have false gods of religion. There are rules and regulations and rights. We have false gods of security. And we have false gods of comfort. These are the things that we aim for and hunger for in our lives today. Look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will 
humble themselves. That means we get out off our how horse and we begin to realize that it is our problem, not God's problem. God wants to talk to you and me. But the problem is that we are not making it available for Him to talk to us. It continues there. And it says, when we do this, when we humble ourselves and pray and seek the face of God and turn away from our evil ways, then, then, God says, I'll hear from heaven and I will forgive your sins and I'll heal your land. And He goes on to say, my eyes will now be open and my ears will be attentive to the prayer from this place. As we pray and as we look to God and, and believe God is alive and that God wants to talk to us and we open the Word of God and begin to read and say, God speaks to me. He leaps off the page of the Bible and begins to answer the questions of life that we have. God wants to talk to you. It's not uncommon for godly people to hear God speaking to them on a daily basis. More often than that, if you're going weeks without hearing from God, check it you probably have not been opening the Word of God. You probably are not into the Word of God, and if you are, you're not talking to God and saying, I'm listening, what He's saying to me. I want to look with you this morning at, at an example in Scripture where God spoke to a young boy, 12 years old. His name was Samuel. God spoke to him, and he did not recognize the voice of God when God spoke to him because he was not yet a godly man. Now, this boy actually lived in a church. I mean, he lived in a church. He was right there near the temple of God. He was right there in a tent, probably right next to the next room off of where the, the altar was. And at night, his job was to turn everything down and, and get everything set for the night so that it would be ready for the next morning. And then he laid down in there, and he was close but being in church and being near the altar is not the secret. Even praying to God and saying, God, speak to me, is not the answer. It's hearing from God. And God speaks through the Bible. If you're not reading the Bible, you have no opportunity whatsoever to hear from God. God wants to talk to you. But you have to be in the Word of God to be able to hear the voice of God speaking to you. I want to think with you this morning about this subject. And as I was preparing for this, I was reminded of a book that Max Licato, he's one of the San Antonio pastors here in town, out on I-10. Max Licato wrote a book called The Eye of the Storm. And in this, he talks about this very subject. He talks about the fact that when he was a young boy himself, even though he was a Christian, he'd given his life to Jesus. He'd become a Christian. He'd been baptized. He was a Christian by all the different legal sense of the word, but he wasn't following God. He wasn't reading the Word of God. He wasn't in the church. He had gotten tired of church, dropped it out of his life. And he, and as a young boy, uh, much like I as a young boy back in my young years, uh, way before I, I got out of school, I worked in a pickle factory. Now, you've never worked anywhere until you work in a pickle factory. I love dill pickles, but I tell you what, it's no fun to work in a dill pickle factory. It's a smelly place. And uh, he worked in a place, too, in his years. He worked in a place that, uh, that laid pipe out in Texas, you know, where the oil would take and be pulled up out of the ground, and then they'd move it from there to the location where they would store it, and then it would be taken from there down to the coast or wherever they, they take and turn it into gasoline and other products. He, he worked down there, and he worked uh, at laying pipe. And when they would, they worked hard. And when it come time for a break, they would all sit down and they'd get their sack lunches out, and and they'd sit down and and they did some other things while they were too. They uh they would uh, have their own little Las Vegas, if you please. They would come in there and they would sit down, and and it was complete with a foul language. It was complete with dirty stories and blackjack and bar stools and. And all that, they put all that together where they ate their lunch. And this was the way that he conducted his young years. How can you hear God speak to you in an environment like that? How can you expect God to speak to you when these are the things you're pouring into your head? How can you expect God to speak to you? Max Licata, who would later become a, a great author and a fabulous pastor, a big church here in San Antonio, 
He said that even though he was a Christian, he had drifted so far away from God that this is where his life was. No wonder, he said, that he didn't hear from God. One day he was there and things were going on and and the supervisor walked up to him. And as the supervisor came up to him, he he kind of stammered. He, he, he looked like he was very shy about what he was going to do. And he looked at him and he said, um, uh, Men, um, um, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, if, if you'd be interested, I'd like to invite you to go with me to church this Sunday. Some of them looked at the ground. Some looked at each other. Some looked at him with with eyes like, I can't believe you're talking like this. And as soon as he started to walk away, they began to laugh and jeer at him and, and make fun of him. Years would go by, but he would never forget the time that that supervisor did that. And uh, he just thought, what in the world was he doing? He's talking about church. And then he went on to say that, that years went on by and And still, he didn't hear from God. He didn't care about God. He didn't know that there was even a God alive anymore, even though he'd given his life to Him. As he struggled with with decisions in his life, he got further and further away from his faith. And not only didn't go to church, but but didn't talk about God in a a kind way at all. And uh, he got to the point to where he became so hungry that God would speak to him. His life was in such bad shape that he began to say, I've got to hear from you. I've got to hear from you. And then he thought, well, I'll go to church and see what that will do for me. But he was afraid because of what his friends might say. He was afraid that they'd laugh at him for going to church. And, and if he pulled out a Bible, it, they, they would reject him for that too. And he began to think that the price for, for trying to find God is just too high in his life, that he had to just get on with it the way he is. And then finally, he thought about that supervisor in the field. How that supervisor, in the midst of all that was going on back there, that supervisor, because he was in touch with God, cared enough about other people that he came and invited them to go to church. So Max said that he uh, invited somebody to go with him and they went to church and and it was there that God spoke to him and, and there where his life turned around completely and he would come on to be later called by God to be a pastor and uh, to be a preacher of the Word of God and to touch the lives of many people, not only through his public speaking as a pastor in his private life as a pastor, but also in his publishing where he would write many books and people would read and learn about God. And it all began by his hunger to hear from God. And then once he began to hear from God, to share that with other people. I'm wondering if you're here this morning and you would like to hear from God. I want you to know something. God wants to talk to you. And God wants to use you as a vessel to reach other people just like He did Max Licato and does today. He wants to use you to touch the lives of people. But it all begins with you making a decision for Jesus. The Bible tells us that there is no other name under heaven and earth by which we may be saved, may, by which we may have that relationship with God, than Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that unless you believe and are baptized, you're not saved. And he looked back on his life and he realized, just like Samuel that we'll look at this morning, that he wasn't saved. It was just a matter of a decision, but it wasn't a life that he'd given his life to. And that it took more than just walking down an aisle. It took more than just getting wet in a baptistry. It took giving his life to Jesus. And I'm going to give you that opportunity this morning at the end of the service to do the same thing that Max Licato and uh, Samuel did. I'm going to give you the opportunity. The Bible says, Jesus is speaking, that if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Heavenly Father. If you'd like to communicate with God and hear God, you need to get your life right. And it begins with making a public decision for Jesus Christ and then following in believer's baptism to show other people what Jesus did for you when He died for you and when He was raised back to life. And as He walks today with you, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Just like that, that hair dryer held that ball in the air, 
God wants to hold you in the air, but you have to be within the envelope of God. You have to allow God to get you there and to keep you there. Let's pray. Father, I pray this morning as we look at this question that that plagues so many people today. Is God alive? Is God speaking? I don't hear God. How do you hear God? Lord, I pray this morning that that each person within the earshot of my voice this morning, as they hear the Word of God explained and see it as it was in Samuel's life, that they'll say, just like Max Licato did, just like Samuel did, I want God in my life. And they'll take and follow You, Lord, and give their life to You. And Father, if there are Christians here this morning that have gotten away from You, they're not into their Bible, I pray that You would challenge us, touch our hearts, that how can we hear from You unless we're willing to listen to You? That starts by opening the Word of God so that we might hear You speak right as it leaps off the pages of the Bible. The Lord will be careful this morning in this sermon to look at the Word of God and see what You're telling us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, if you have your Bible, turn with me over to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. And as we look about a third of the way through your Bible... I'll also put it up on the screen in case you don't have a Bible with you, but I encourage you to bring a Bible to church with you and to look in the Word of God as I preach and take notes in there. I give you those little note sheets as a kind of a way of triggering it for you. But my goal is for you to start writing in your Bible and to carry it home and to use those notes to take and guide you through a couple of days of Bible study so that you might own this passage. It might become you You understand it just like I'm sharing with you this morning. You will forget if you do not take notes, and if you do not write in in your Bible, and you do not take and review those notes, you will forget 95 to 98% of what I say this morning within an hour after this service. If you take notes, you'll remember a small portion of it, but you will remember some of it. I love to ask people a question after church sometimes. We'll go out to eat or something, and I'll say, What spoke to you this morning? What did you hear in the, in, uh, the sermon this morning? And the most common answer I get is, uh, uh. Even though they know I'm going to ask them that question, they, they usually say something, I knew you were going to ask me. They still didn't remember just one thing they could say. You won't be that way, will you? You're going to pay attention, write some notes, and you're going to take and walk away from church today and say, I'm going to take away from me more than 98, more than 2%. I'm not going to forget 98%. I'm going to pay attention. Well, as I look at this, I, I divided it down into three parts so it would be easy for me to remember and also easy for you to take some notes on if you want to hear from God, the very first thing you got to do, you ready for this? You got to long for it. You just got to hunger for it. You got to long for it. That's your first fill in. You got to hunger for it. It's got to be something that you're just desiring to do. We see a picture here of Samuel as he's, he's in his bed and he's asleep. He's right there in the church. I mean, you're in the church, right? He's, he's in the church and it's nighttime and we can tell from the language of the light in the te- temple that it's almost uh, not near time for the dawn, the light to come up outside, but it's, it's, it's past midnight, and he, he's laying down, he's asleep, and then all of a sudden we'll read that, that a voice speaks to him. You have to long for God to talk to you. He didn't long for God to talk to him. He was just doing church things. God often speaks to us directly while at other times God speaks to us in other ways. Think with me on this. Look at 1 Samuel 3, verse 1. And the boy served the Lord. Now that's the name that Jesus said was him. In the New Testament, when we read in the New Testament, God's Son, Jesus Christ, was speaking. The term that is used to describe Jesus is the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That is a term that described Jesus Christ. That is God. And here He is. He's pre-existent back in that day. He's the one speaking to Samuel, even though He has not been born yet. He is alive in heaven. Remember, we read in the New Testament, He existed before the creation. In fact, the whole creation was performed by Jesus Christ. 
So the boy served the Lord in Eli's presence, and in those days the word of the Lord was rare and prophetic, and visions were not widespread. People did not hear from God. They went to church. They didn't hear from God. They heard what the preacher said, but they didn't hear from God. Let me ask you a question. You might not remember 2% of what I say here this morning, but if God spoke directly to you, you think you'd remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my goal this morning, is to help you get there to where you can listen to God speak. Listening to me, that's not that important. Listening to God, that's important. He did not hear God speaking. Look back again at chapter one day Eli, whose eyesight was failing, he was lying in his usually place. Now, Eli was the high priest. He was the one in charge of the temple there. And Samuel, Hannah was uh, his mother's name, well, she asked God for a son. And God blessed her with a son. But she promised before he would be born, God, if you'll just give me a son, I'll give him to you. If you give me a son, I'll give him to you. You ever made a promise to God and not kept it? Well, Hannah kept it. So as soon as he was weaned, Hannah took her son down to the church house. She went in and saw the pastor, and she said, Pastor, I'm bringing my son to give him to, to God to serve you here in the temple. You'll raise him. The pastor said, Are you sure about this? I'm sure those are the words he probably said. And Hannah said, I promised this boy to God if he would just let me have a son And he gave me a son, so I'm fulfilling the promise that I made to God. And so Hannah left her son with Eli to raise. He was the the priest, the pastor, the prophet of the land. And as he brought him there, he would take and teach him all about the church work. The Bible says that he became a priest there, that he would do priestly things. He would work at the altar and do all of that. Now the interesting thing about this, if we read the story further, is Eli... He had three sons. And the normal thing would have been that his three sons would have been the priest and they would have been the ones that would take care of the temple and doing all those kind of things at the temple. But we read more about them that they were scallywags. They did terrible things. I mean, absolutely foul and despicable things. When people would come to worship... They would have sexual relations with them. They would steal from them. They would do all kinds of horrible things to them. It literally was driving the people away from God because of the behavior of Eli's sons. Eli did not do that. Eli was a good man. But there was a problem with Eli, we're going to find out as we look further. He did have a problem that God would punish him for. Samuel came, and Samuel's there. In verse 3 again, we see... Before the lamp of God had gone out. In other words, the oil's lit. The the oil burns for so many hours, and it's time to where in the morning that the oil will all be burnt out. And so it was not morning time, but the way they describe it is that it was getting close to the time that the oil would burn out. So the lamp of God had not gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was located. And then the Lord called Samuel and he said, Here am I. Here am I. Is that what you're willing to say this morning if God speaks to you? Here am I. And he ran to Eli. And he said, Here am I. You called me. Well, guess what? Eli wasn't the one that had called him. It wasn't Eli that had called him. But Samuel was willing to do what he thought he was supposed to do. He thought it was the preacher that he was supposed to be talking to, but it was God speaking to him. He actually heard the voice of God, but he didn't hear it because he didn't know who it was. He didn't understand that he could hear from God. Do you understand that you can hear from God? That the purpose of the pastor of the church is to teach you the Bible so that you can hear from God? The purpose of the pastor is not to answer your questions. It's to get you to the person that can answer your questions. The purpose of the pastor is not to teach you how to live your life. It's to get you to the person, God Himself, that can guide you and lead you through life so that you can live a life pleasing to Him. 
You have to long for that though. You have to long for it. It has to become such a priority in your life that you won't let other things interfere with it. You have to have such a longing for it that at that time of day when you set aside that you're going to sit down and read the Bible, nothing stops it. Oh, listen to me. Everything will try to stop it. Just as real as God is, so is Satan. Satan has tried to usurp the, the rights and privileges of God since back in the Garden of Eden. And it cost Eve and Adam their very staying in the presence of God because they listened to the devil rather than listening to God who loved them and wanted to give them everything. And I want you to understand something. Every possible circumstance, whether it's your children, your grandchildren, whether it's a bathroom call, whether you get hungry, whether it's a telephone call, everything will try to interfere with you studying the Word of God on a daily basis. But that's your time to hear God speak to you. Cherish it. Protect it. Make it your time. Don't wait for somebody else to take you to the Word of God. You make it your time with God. That's what you want. You want to hear from God. Long for it. Long for it. The Word of the Lord was rare in those days. People were not in worship and no one was worthy to actually hear from God. You want you know how you get worthy? You give your life to Jesus. He comes to send His Holy Spirit to live inside of you and He makes you worthy to talk to God and to hear from God. Number two, not only do you need to long for it, but you need to be ready for this now. You need to listen. God's speaking. There's not a moment that God's not speaking. The question is, are you listening? My mentor in the pastoring work, when I gave my life to Jesus to be a pastor, and uh, he would meet me every Monday. We would get together and and, uh, meet. He had an old pickup truck. We'd sit up on a hill, and we'd look out over that hill, and uh, I would tell him all the problems with my little church that I had, the first church that I pastored. And he would take and listen to me so kindly, and then he'd say, well, what in the world's different about that? He said, that's what you're supposed to be there for. Teach them how to hear from God, not you. The fact that they don't listen to you, that's not important. What they need to do is they need to listen to God. Your job is to stay there, be patient, put up with them no matter what they do to you, and teach them to hear from God by teaching them the Word of God. Nobody called you there to be popular. They called you there to teach the Word of God and to teach them to study the Word of God. We have a lot of pastors, I'm afraid, today that are more interested in being popular and successful than they are in teaching people to hear from God. We need to long to hear from God, and then we need to listen when God is speaking. Look at chapter uh, 3 again, verse 4. And then the Lord called Samuel and he said to him, Here I am. He ran to Eli and he said, Here I am, you called me. This is getting old. He said, I didn't call you. Go back, lie down. Stop waking me up. I need my sleep. So he went back and he laid down. And then once again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, you called me. And he said, Boy, I didn't call you, my son. Go back and lie down. You ever had a child wake you up in the middle of the night and you kept saying, go to sleep. You need your rest. I do in your mind is what you're really saying. Go back. But he left. Verse 8. Now, once again, for the third time, the Lord called Samuel and he got up and he went to Eli and he said, here I am, you called me. Guess what? Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the boy. Oh, my dear friend. I could take a lot of time to tell you how Eli felt at that moment. But God wasn't speaking through him anymore to the boy. God was going to now speak directly to him. I want you to understand something. My job is to get you in touch with God. Not to get you and keep you in touch with me. My job is to get you in touch with God so that God can speak to you and you'll know His voice. Look back at the Scripture. It says that in verse 9 there, He said, go lie down. And if you hear the call again, go back please. If you hear the call again, say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. 
Samuel went back and he laid down in his place. God spoke again. The Lord came and stood there and called him, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel responded, Speak for your servant. Your servant is listening. We need to be listening. Eli was there. We need to be listening. You know, the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there were people were not in worship, and no one was even worthy, worthy to hear God. But God was speaking. And He spoke this time. It took Eli four times to recognize that three times for Eli to recognize that God wasn't speaking through him anymore to Samuel. He was wanting to speak to Samuel directly. So it took Eli four times, actually Samuel, four times to recognize that it was God the one that had been calling and talking to him the whole time. And then how do we get there? We get there by locating ourselves where God's at work. Here, you know, we got a fruit tree. We got several fruit trees in our yard. We had our very first apple. The very first apple was a red, delicious apple. Still got the label on the tree where I planted it. I don't know, probably about 40 years ago. Seems that long. And that fruit tree has finally borne fruit. It bore some last year, but I didn't get it. The squirrels got it faster than I did. But it bore some fruit, and this time I went out there and grabbed the first one off, and I said, I'm going to get it before the squirrel does. This is a big tree. And so I got that, and I put it in the refrigerator, and yesterday I ate it. It was good. You know what was best about that? I planted it. I watered it. And I fed it. This year, what I've done done different than I have in the last several years, I've been out there with a hose just pouring the water to that tree, pouring the water to that tree, pouring the water to that tree, saying, you're going to grow me an apple, you're going to grow me an apple, you're going to grow me an apple. You need to get ready to locate yourself. I had to get out there and locate myself where the water needed to hit the tree if I was going to grow apples on that tree. I wanted one. And you know what? It was a good tasting apple. <sighs> Locate yourself where God's work. You know what the best place you can go to find God at work? At church. Get yourself in a Bible-believing, but a Bible-preaching and a Bible-teaching church where the Bible is the focus. Not rules and regulations. Not teaching you different things to do and things not to do. Not teaching you ways to, to, to worship the other idols and things like that. But some place that they teach you the Bible is the only way for you to talk to God and hear from God and get in there and get everything you can until the point that the preacher tells you, uh, God's speaking to you. You need to stop asking me these questions. You need to answer Him. He's the one talking to you. But it will only occur, my dear friend, when you give your life to Jesus publicly. That's what Jesus says. If you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Heavenly Father. Second, be baptized. And that's not a baptism you had years ago. That's a baptism that occurs after you give your life to Jesus and realize that He wants to talk to you. Be baptized to show what He's done for you and what you're doing now is following Him. And then you're prepared as you open your Bible and sit down daily looking at it and saying, God, I need directions in this matter. And God will leap off the pages of that Bible and speak to you and you will say, I didn't realize it could be this easy. But it begins. Your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ, putting it all on Him. Don't put it on me, my dear friend. I can't get you into heaven. I can't get God to speak to you. I can only teach you the Bible so that you can get there on your own. Like what Eli said, next time you hear the voice, it's God. Say, here I am. I'm ready for you. Locate yourself where God's at work. First thing, get involved in a church, worship, service, and activities where the Bible is the focus. Number two, seek out greater, greater participation. Seek it out greater participation. We have these fellowships after church. You just don't know what you're missing. You think, well, I'm not hungry. Who cares whether you're hungry or not? You need to get participation with people that know God and hear from God. Get to know people. If you sit at a table and they're a dud, don't sit there next time. Sit with somebody else. They might be seeking God at a deeper level than you or might not be seeking God at all. Move around. Fellowship time is a time where you can hear from somebody but the preacher. 
and talk to them about, you know, I started this Bible reading and I just don't seem to be hearing God. And they'll say, you know, I was that way too. And for long, God will begin to speak to you as you seek Him out. Seek Him out. At age 16, Bob had given up trying to please God. As a typical adolescent, he figured that he was going to always offend God, so he dropped out of church and he just stopped doing things that. He put religion behind him. But one day at work, he was at work and he was eating lunch and at a big boy's restaurant. And as he was sitting there eating a sandwich at the big boy's restaurant, he'd given up on God. This man walked up to him and he said, I need to see you in church. And he turned around and looked at the man and thought, who are you to come up and tell me that? Who are you? He didn't say it, but that's what he thought. And it was kind of disgusting. He turned around to look away. When he turned back, the man was not there anymore. And he thought about it. What did he say? And then he thought, well, he was just trying to get me to come to his church. Then he thought, well, if he was doing that, he should have told me which church it was. God had spoken to him. You see, he was a Christian, but he had gotten far away from God. And God came and spoke to him and said, Go to church. Go to church. Morning, have time to eat at home. And uh, we were on the way in, and, and I deviated off the road, and Viola looked at me, and she said, Where are you going? I said, I'm going to McDonald's. To any of y'all that know me, you know I don't like McDonald's, but I was going there. You know why? They had food and quick. And I was running kind of late anyway, so I pulled in there and I just ordered something without even thinking. I just ordered something. I just want food. I want you to know, when you need to get close to God, get in church where the Bible is the focus. Get in church where the Bible is taught. Get in church where they say the Bible is the secret to your solutions. That's where you'll get to know Jesus, and then He is the real solution. But He'll speak to you through the Word of God. Are you there? I'm praying that God's speaking to you this morning. Would you stand together with me this morning? As we come to the close of the service, this is an opportunity for you to do what God's saying to you to do. As God's spoken to you today, and you've had that nudging in your spirits, you need to get this done you need to get it right. You need to come join a church where they're preaching the Word of God and you're constantly being reminded that God wants to talk to you. This is the time. Maybe this morning is the time when you want to say, I'm giving my life to Jesus. I played religion long enough and it did nothing for me. It's time now for me to get in touch with God. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank You this morning that You love us. You care for us in such detail, Lord, that You want to communicate with us on a daily basis. But Lord, just like Samuel, he, he thought it was down in the religious rites. He thought working at the altar would be it. He thought doing keeping the, the, the church work and all those kind of things was it. He thought Eli, the pastor, was the, it. But he finally came to realize that God had a vision for him personally and God, You wanted to speak to him personally. Father, we need to hear from You. But it all begins with a commitment to thank Jesus for dying on the cross to pay for our sins and to make us able to come into Your presence. It all begins with making that public that we're accepting Jesus and following Him. It all begins with making it public by showing in baptism what You've done for us. Now, Father, speak to hearts here this morning and let them know You're concerned about them and You care about them. And you want to talk with them. In Jesus' name, amen.